Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, pack one, pick one. What do we have? So rare, hatchery spider, not amazing. Like, the ability usually doesn't do much, so we're paying 7 mana for a 5-7 reach. Which, you know, sometimes you'll put in your deck, but you're not too excited about it. Uh, Stalwart, on the other hand, is excellent in any of the white decks, either Celestia or Boros. Very hard to block in the early turns, and Mantra is great alongside any one-powered creatures, like the Rock Charger, Hunted Witness, Healer's Hawk. Um, what else? I've got a powerful removal spell in Luminous Bonds. Some nice uh, uh, multicolor removal spells in Artful Takedown and a Hypothesis. -al. Although while these cards are good, first picking them is a big cost, since if we don't end up in exactly one of these guilds, we're not going to be able to play them. So for me it's probably between Stalwart and Luminous Bonds. Eh, we'll take the Stalwart. Alright, second pick. Dawn of Hope can be powerful. It requires kind of the right circumstances. Usually it's going to be better in Celestia than in Boros, since Boros just wants to curve out and smash face. But sometimes the game drags out and then Dawn of Hope can win you a late game, even in a Boros deck. Although when curving out it doesn't really help you in any way. So it can be kind of a dead card uh, sometimes. Other times against the slower decks it can definitely win you the late game. So Dawn of Hope, again, has its moments, but definitely not a slam dunk first pick rare that you play in every deck. Uh, Indrik is great in especially Golgari, but even Celestia is happy to have it. Fine Broker, of course, great in Golgari. And that's about it. All the commons, there's some playable ones here, but nothing uh, that we want to pick over the uncommons or the rare. So, given that we started with a stalwart, I'm not opposed to taking a Dawn of Hope. If we can kind of build around it, then it gets better. So, yeah, let's take a Dawn of Hope. You wonder what uncommon the bots took? Well, we can find out. Since the older sets still use the same order of the uncommons, so we can usually tell which uncommon is missing. Affectionate Indric, Golgari Fine Broker are usually paired with Sinister Sabotage or Murmuring Mystic. So two blue uncommons that are missing. So we should probably not uh, go into a blue guild here with that information. But that's not a problem here since we open District Guide, which is a very good green card. Uh, any good red cards in case we want to go Boros anyway. Although the Dawn of Hope again, much better in Celestia. Yeah, like Goblin's fine, but not exciting. So I think this is a pretty straightforward district guide and look to be Celestia. Alright, pretty happy with the Generous Stray, one of my favorite cards in the set. Great in Golgari, great in Celestia. And then we can hope to wheel, like Flower Flourish would have been okay. Um, Prey Upon can be okay alongside Rosemane Centaurs. Flower Flourish is a playable card, I'll happily put it in my Celestia decks as kind of a way to smooth out the curve early and then later in the game as a nice Anthem effect. So it's definitely a consideration here with the Generous Stray, but I think just the the early good enablers for Convoke are so important, and Generous Stray is one of the better ones. Gives you that kind of cards smoothing, similar to the District Guide. I just like all these two-for-one creatures early to set up your powerful Convoke plays, instead of having to play like a 10th District Guard that gets blanked pretty early. At least the Generous Stray draws you a card. Here, on the other hand, Skyline Scouts doesn't get blanked as easily. Uh, Recruits is also fine if we're aggressive enough. But I think, given how most Celestia decks shape up, you're good at stalling out the ground and then you need a bit of evasion to help you close out the game. And the Skyline Scout does just that. Alright, Rosemane, perfect. Six pick. That's about where we can hope to pick them up. Sometimes we will have to take them early, but the bots don't really take the centaur too highly, so we can usually get them around this uh, pick here, so we're very happy with it. Prey Upon, again, plays well with the centaur, but we want to take the centaur first. Wood Shaper's decent too, especially if we end up with a couple Luminous Bonds. Uh, Gird for Battle, more of a Boros card than a Celestia card. Uh, Wood Shaper can also help us find the Dawn of Hope, so that's additional value there. Uh, Blade Instructor can be okay, but not at its best in Celestia as opposed to Boros. So I'll take the Wood Shaper. 
uh, while being an uncommon that's in our colors here. Joint shields is usually pretty marginal, difficult to set it up. Keeping up 5 mana is a lot, especially in a deck that usually plays at sorcery speed. So not a fan. Uh, Dissident, on the other hand, a great 2-drop since it's still relevant in the late game with the activated ability. Uh, Companions, also a decent enabler for any Convoke shenanigans. Don't have many 2-drops yet in terms of creatures, Scout and Stalwart. I kind of like Dissident, just a big fan of the card in general. And while Companions is a good Convoke enabler, the difference between 1 and 2 creatures usually isn't huge. Since the creatures we want to be convoking are usually just Rosemane Centaur, the more expensive convoke creatures are usually pretty bad. So the one creature versus two creatures is actually not as relevant, unless we've got a ton of synergy with tokens. The companions do play well with the Dawn of Hope, which I guess is worth pointing out as well. But um, I think I just want to shore up the two drops a, a bit more here. Beetle's fine too. Uh, Peacemaker, usually not a card I'm too excited about, but it does play well with the Dawn of Hope. Uh, Righteous Blow can be okay for facing the more aggressive Boros decks, although it's not usually a, a card I'm too happy to play. This could be a deck where we actually want the Peacemaker if we're uh, trying to play a longer game with Dawn of Hope. But again, there, there's going to be games against the more controlling decks where the gain for life text is actually going to be a liability. Yeah, I'll probably still take the Righteous Blow for now. The Boros decks are popular and Righteous Blow is okay against them. Pretty happy with the shield mates, can attack and then still tap for Convoke. And I doubt I'm playing any of these. Probably don't need a second Righteous Blow. Candlelight Vigil also not uh, exactly what I want. All the Righteous Blows. Maybe I'll want a Vine as another Convoke enabler. Alright, so first pack went pretty well. Picked up a Centaur, I've got uh, Dawn of Hope as a nice late game card, and some overall decent uh, commons, and then the guide as well as a nice two for one. So yeah, just looking to do the same in the next couple packs. Um, Alright, I guess I'll take another generous tray here. Some powerful cards in other colors. Color Culprit, also not too impressive. Don't have a reason to take the Guild Gate yet. Take the Kitty Cat. Ooh, Bounty of Might. That's a definitely powerful card. So probably taking that here. One thing to note about kind of the ideal average Selesnia deck, we're usually a deck that wants to have a relatively low curve and then have the expensive cards be Convo creatures like Rosemane Centaur. So we usually want to play lower land counts. So getting up to six mana for Bounty of Might is actually not what our deck wants to be doing, typically speaking. But of course the power level is undeniable, we're eventually going to get to 6 mana. We're also playing Dawn of Hope, so we kind of want to hit more land drops anyway. So this might be a slightly different Selatia deck that's a bit less aggressive and more looking to go for the late game. Alright, Luminous Bonds is great. Probably got to take it over the Rosemane sadly, since we have the Wood Shaper as well, which can find it and our deck needs a bit more removal. Nothing here that we want. Got the typical pack with all the mediocre uncommons here. Could take a Blade Instructor, I doubt I'm playing it, but you never know. Could take a Guild Gate in case we end up splashing a powerful Black Rare that we opened in the last pack. Which could be reasonable, we have a District Guide as well, so we've got a bit of mana fixing in case we open like... I don't know, the Underrealm Lich for example. I could uh, make that work. So I'll speculate on the Guild Gate. Alright, could take another Wood Shaper, that would be nice, Companions would be okay, Prey Upon, we currently only have the Rosemane as a big creature to fight with, so the Prey Upon's not too exciting. I think I'll take the Wood Shaper, again, can find our Luminous Bonds and our Dawn of Hope, besides creatures. Do I want the third one? It is a slow card, so we can't play too many of them, but we don't actually have much at the top of our curve, so I don't mind it over Skyline Scouts. Seems reasonable enough. Ooh, pretty happy with the Crawl Harpooner though. And Smite of the Masses could be an okay pump spell if we're going wide enough. Another Generous Stray is definitely a consideration. So our deck is relatively aggressive. And then we have this Dawn of Hope and this Bounty of Might that are more expensive cards. 
And then Triple Woodshaper, which can help us kind of grind. Could definitely use more good 3-drops, so the Generous Stray fits in. Might of the Masses, a nice cheap trick. Can let us attack and still develop our board. So I don't mind it. Our deck is mostly creatures at the end of the day, so having like a Might of the Masses as a trick isn't bad. But we definitely like another Stray as well. I doubt I'm playing Color the Culprits. It's just so bad against the Boros decks if you ever draw it. Might play Peacemaker if we're looking for a slower deck. Guardian can make the cuts. And happy with another Generous Stray. And I guess now I'll take the Color. Another Peacemaker. So we're definitely in the right guild here. So. What is our deck missing? Another Luminous Bonds would go pretty well. More Curve Toppers like Roseman Center with Convoke are pretty important. So that's the type of card we're going to be looking for in the last pack. Ooh, Find Finality. Not exactly a great synergy in a Go White deck, but undeniably powerful. Plus we can always cast Find for just double green. We have the Golgari Guildgate plus District Guide, so we could potentially get access to Finality. The other option, I guess the only other option, is really the Healer's Hawk. It's just kind of a nice cheap evasive creature, can help us Convoke, and maybe pick up a counter from Mentor with a Stalwart, but we don't have much Mentor going on. And it's also a lifelinker for the Donophobe. So the Hawk would be a good addition to the deck, no doubt, but I think Find Finality has more upside. What do we have here? Not much. Our deck doesn't really want the motion, don't think we're that aggressive. Could take a Hunted Witness just as a cheap creature for Convoke. Do we need a Recluse? Maybe we do need a Recluse. We're a bit soft to flying creatures. Although we do already have a lot of threes, like I don't need to play the Peacemaker. But we have Triple Stray and Guide, which I'm definitely playing. So I don't know if we need many more three drops here. I think I would play a Hunted Witness. Although I guess we don't have a ton of Convoke, so I would need to pick up a few more Convoke creatures for the Witness to truly shine. Yeah, if the Witness dies, it also leaves behind a lifelink token for Dawn of Hope. Could see going either way. Ideally, we pick up some other flyers like Parhelium Patrols at 4 mana to solve the flying issue, but we're not guaranteed to get those. I don't know, we're, we're probably wheeling the Witness anyway, but I'll take the Recluse for now. Ooh, wow, what a pack. Camaraderie and Conclave Cavalier, two insane cards for the deck, as well as Centaur. Jeez, wish we could take the entire pack. It's gotta be between one of these two. Now we do already have a Bounty of Might and Find Finality potentially at 6. So there are some diminishing returns with playing too many 6 drops. Don't have much going on at 4. So this could be a deck where we would rather have Cavalier. Although Camaraderie can definitely win a game where the board stalls out. I think our curve is more interested in the Cavalier. It's also a creature we can find with a Wood Shaper, whereas we can't find Camaraderie. But Camaraderie has the most upside if we can actually cast it. If we didn't already have a Bounty of Might and a Find Finality, I think I would take the Camaraderie. Given that we do have those cards and a Dawn of Hope as more late game, I think we're looking just for a good mid-range threat to bridge the gap between the early game and the late game. And Cavalier does that. So I think I'm taking Cavalier. Nothing here that I really want. Has a Marshal, not usually a card I'm interested in. It's very difficult to keep connecting with it. Uh, might take the Hunted Witness now. I guess we do need some more beef, but Arboretum Elemental is just so bad. With all the Death Edge creatures in the format and 5 Toughness, still can be traded off for pretty easily. It doesn't really break the board stall, unless we somehow traded off resources early. It is good alongside Find Finality, so that's definitely a good... Uh, Combination if we can play Elemental and then cast Find Finality to clean up the small stuff and then kind of put the opponent in the Abyss. Force them to chum block every turn. Could take the Gateway Plaza to add more mana fixing for the Find Finality. We're probably wheeling one of the Hunted Witnesses anyway, so I guess I don't have to take it highly. I guess I'll take the Elemental in case we don't pick up another Convoke creature, but ideally I don't have to play it. Ooh, very happy with the Ladef Champion. Uh, Guildgate would also be great, especially with a... District Guide in the deck, but I don't think we can pass up on the Death Champion. Great Mana Sync. And probably take another Shield Mate for now. Another Dissident seems good. 
I guess I'll take a third one. Maybe Beetle's better, although... We're not really a Golgari deck looking to cast uh, Severstrands. So I, I doubt that we're gonna play three Dissidents, since there are some diminishing returns there. I could take the Restorer, I guess, as just a big Convoke creature that has a bit of synergy with Dawn of Hope as well, if we have enough mana. Because that's kind of what our deck is lacking at the moment, is kind of a big, beefy creature to Convoke into, once we play all the cheap stuff. So this could actually be a, a spot where we want to Restore, since we've got basically all the two drops we want. We've got Scout, Stalwart, Double Dissident, Beetle, Harpooner, Double Shieldmate, so... There's no lack of 2-drops. Restore isn't huge, but it's still bigger than a 2-2. Two -two. I guess the Dissident gets bigger than the Restore if we pump it, but we already have two Dissidents, Ladef Champion, Dawn of Hope, so we've got a ton of mana sinks. So I don't know if we need another Dissident. I'll take it. I'm not sure if I'm playing it yet, but I'm probably not going to need a third Dissident. Take another one, I guess. Could also splash for the Lurcher, but I don't think... We're really going that deep into Golgari. I think I'm just going to be a Celestial deck with one Golgari Guildgate I can fetch up with Guide, and then I can cast Finds for double green, and every now and then it could come up that we cast Finality, but it's not like the primary goal of Find Finality in the deck. I guess I'll still take the Lurcher, but probably not playing it. Did wield the Hunted Witness if we want it. Ooh, nice. Rosemane on the wheel. I think we can get all the garbage, like the Loxodon and the Arboretum Elemental, out of the deck now. Uncommon for the Vaults. Alright. So, let's have a look here. Plenty of uh, cuts to make. So Loxodon, Elemental out. Probably don't Need two Ladev Guardians, might play one of them. Our interaction. We've got a Luminous Bond, Smite of the Masses. Not sure if I'm playing the Righteous Blows. And then Dawn of Hope is kind of a late game card. And the rest is all creatures. Center we can usually play around turn four. Probably don't need Vine, don't have a ton of convo creatures, just two Centaurs. So the dream of like turn three Centaurs probably not gonna happen too often. Can probably cut at least one of the two drops. Probably cutting one, if not both, Righteous Blows. And I could take out a land as well, since our curve is kind of low, and we're cantripping a ton with the Generous Strays. But then again, we do have Triple Wood Shaper as well, so we can use a lot of mana. We've got Ladev Champion as a mana sink, we've got Dawn of Hope as a mana sink, fine to get back creatures and replay them, and Double Dissident to sink mana into. So I don't think cutting a land is the way to go here. Since we've got a bit of an atypical Selesnia deck. I think I'm cutting both Righteous Blows. We've got enough early plays to kind of hold off opposing aggro decks. Sure, this can take a Sky Knight Legionnaire out that we could struggle with otherwise, since our deck actually doesn't have many flying creatures. But we do have a Recluse, which I'm probably playing, and a Harpooner. So we're hoping to find those. Ladev Guardian might not be necessary. It is just a nice, like, beefy creature we can play on turn 3, so it can hold off opposing aggro decks, but it doesn't usually do much, it just kind of sits there in play, so it's definitely cuttable. What's the weakest 2-drop in the deck? Uh, it's between the Beetle and the Shieldmate. Shieldmate is good with Convoke, but we only have the two Convoke creatures, and it's good with the Champion since it can attack and then still tap, so it has a bit of uh, synergy there. Although Beetle can allow for scenarios where we put a counter on our 2-drop so it can keep attacking, putting a counter on Dissident so it can become a 5-5 five five to attack past, like Douser of Lights or Wishcoin Crabs can also come up, or just put a counter on the Centaur so it can keep attacking. So I am a big fan of the Beetle, so it could still be better than Shieldmate here. I think I'm actually playing the Beetle over Shieldmate here. And then I could see Shaving 1 Woodshaper, and then I need to make one more cut. I think I'm happy with the Witness, just as another cheap creature. Don't think I want to shave a Generous Stray. Yeah, the, the mana base is going to be fixed in a second, we're not playing any Swamps. I like the idea of 17 lands with all the mana sinks we have. Again, we have Double Dissident that we can sink 5 mana into. Scout can gain Flying. Champion 5 mana to make a token. Woodshaper is a 4 mana play that finds more cards for us to cast. Got a Dawn of Hope for mana, make a token. 
So we don't lack mana sinks, so that makes me want to stick to 17 lands. The idea of Dawn of Hope is that our deck is pretty good at stalling out the ground, and then we can use Dawn of Hope to eventually take over the game. We don't need to have other lifelink or life gain cards for Dawn of Hope to be good. It's just kind of an engine by itself. It definitely has games where Dawn of Hope is never going to get activated, and we're just going to die with it in our hand or in play, but the upside is there. Uh, I don't think any of the non-creature spells can be cut. They all fill a pretty important role. So maybe I cut the Recluse anyway. Although then we're going to be a bit softer against flying creatures. Maybe I cut the second Woodshaper, but then we're less likely to find our Luminous Bonds and Dawn of Hopes. Find Finality is still powerful without the Finality half. Just find, get two creatures back, we're a creature deck. It's a pretty good card by itself. And then we just happen to have the one Guild Gate plus District Guide for finality, but find by itself is a very good card. Could shave a generous tray, maybe it's fine. Alright, sorry, sorry generous tray, we're just playing two of you. And eight planes, eight forest plus guild gate should be fine, we have more green cards and white cards. Yeah, the deck's okay. It's missing, maybe like a second luminous bonds, would have been nice, um, but overall pretty balanced, reasonably powerful Celestial deck, could have used Maybe an extra flying creature or two, like a Parhelion Patrol, but can't complain. Alright, decent uh, opening hands. Some two drops into a Rosemain Centaur. Probably gonna lose a game or two to Flyers. Might lose a game where we kind of have a clunky hand with too many of the expensive cards or too many of the build arounds and not enough cheap stuff. Might lose to a bomb since we don't have much removal. Alright, generous trace looking good. Can even mantra onto it. So next turn might be better to just attack and then play double 2-drop instead of playing out the Centaur, we'll see. Just attack Mentor and then play double 2-drop. And which 2-drop should I play? Definitely the Dissident, since if I draw land I can pump it. And I guess shield mate since I could attack and then still convoke. Probably not using the flying ability. Another gateway plaza. So opponent off to a pretty slow start here. And the disappearance on the stalwarts. That's fine. So I can attack with everyone and then still Convoke the center unless they trade for the shield mate. But now I can still do it anyway, so let's get in there. Should have played my land first, that was a mistake. To at least uh, threaten the pump on the dissident, because I think I would, would rather keep the dissident afterwards. But uh, opponent didn't trade, so that's good. So let's see, 5, 6, so I can play 1 2-drop and then still play Centaur. And I think the 2-drop should be the Stalwart here. There's also an argument for playing the Scout, since it's more likely that the Stalwart gets blanked than the Scout. Can I attack with everyone? Let's see what happens then. I mean, if I attack with everyone and they block Stalwart, they would take 10 if I pump. Put them to 1. That seems like an okay exchange. Could also just attack Centaur and Dissidents. Nah. Send in everyone. And then if they're blocking, I guess it makes sense for them to block Dissidents, so we, f we have to pump. But then I also have the option of just dealing 8 and pulling more creatures out. The trading here seems fine, actually. I 
Oh yeah, Rosemary's Center is great. It does get answered by kind of the common removal spells in Izzet and in Demir, but you're usually trading down on mana since you can often convoke the centaur cheaply. And in my experience, the more expensive convoke creatures aren't actually all that amazing, because that often leaves you completely tapped out, and then if they killed your one big convoke creature, you're just taking a ton of damage, especially against the aggressive Boros decks. So the fact that the Rosemane is kind of relatively large, but still relatively cheap to convoke is just important for those uh, explosive starts where you get to curve out and then uh, play a 4-4 on top. Yeah, the Elemental does have Hexproof, but uh, there are some reasons to dislike the Elemental. The presence of multiple Death Touch creatures, a bunch of tokens that can chum block it since it doesn't have Trample. So it does have some downsides as well over maybe the Worm. How is Gills of Ravnica draft on paper? Um, it's somewhat similar to Arena, I would say. Boros, Demir, still the more popular guilds. Guess I'm playing Shieldmate for now. Turn 1 Phantasm is pretty scary. Opponent could have minus 3 minus 0, the Dazzling Lights, which could uh, basically eat a Shieldmate for free. So I think my play is just going to be Ladaf Champion, pass a turn, no attacks. They seem to be holding priority here. And for single blue, there's not much they can have. It's basically Dazzling Lights. Don't even know if there's anything else for single blue. Rosemane's good. Probably just go Dissident into Rosemane here. Instead of trying to attack with a Ladaf Champion. If I tap both a Dissident and a Shieldmate, I could attack with the Champion as a 4-4 and then Dazzling Lights isn't enough. But now at 3 mana, they could have a bunch of other stuff too. Wishcoin Crab does block the center pretty well, but we're uh, close to casting this Bounty of Might, so we can start making tokens with Ladef Champion. I think the player is going to be make token with Champion and then attack tapping four creatures. Attacks as a 6-6, six, six, so double blocking doesn't kill it. Alternatively, I could Luminous Bonds, the Crab, and then attack with everyone and then Champion... Tapping Centaur and Shieldmate comes, becomes a 4-4, that's also pretty good, and I don't mind trading Dissident for Phantasm. Just gets us in a ton of damage. Hit them for 10 if they want to trade for the Dissident, and if we draw land, Bounty of Might could just kill them. If we don't draw a land, we can just activate Lodaf Champion for a while. And if they tap out, then uh, Bounty of Mind just kills them if we draw a land. Capture Sphere does not take away the ability, does it? So we can still just make tokens, but now they're just dead. Alright, cool. Gotta wait for them to block, and then Bounty of Mind, the unblocked creature. For a casual plus nine plus nine. All right, missing some white mana here for Cavalier, but we do have gender stray for the redraw and just need a single white source for Wood Shaper and Luminous Bonds. We have 8 white sources in the deck on the draw, so we're probably favorites to find the white mana by turn 4. Yeah, I think I can keep. Witness can go.
Alright. So our hand's shaping up nicely. Tassar probably needs to be answered with the Luminous Bonds, since it also blanks all the 4-4 creatures we have in hand. I guess I could double block it if they attack. Just play Cavalier for now. It's more mana efficient. And then next turn I might be able to like Luminous Bonds plus maybe play Rosemane. Yeah, I guess I can buy that. Yeah, if the Cavalier dies, leaves two tokens plus Stray, then we can Luminous Bonds plus Centaur, but if the Stray also dies, then we can double block. Alright, Sever Strands Cavalier, that's fine. Also, Sever Strands a reason to wait on the Luminous Bonds, because otherwise they get a free creature to sacrifice. So, I think I'm just taking four, and then I could even, if they don't play another creature, attack with the two twos, and then Convoke out Centaur. Alright, never mind. Dead weight on one of them. Attack for two, play Rosemane so the Rosemane and Stray could double block the Dowser. Now I could keep up green mana to bluff having some sort of pump spell like Mito the Masses. Don't know if that's worth it in the spots. I think I'm better off just keeping more options on defense. And we'll see what happens. Opponent's about to refuel with the Locket, so we're about to refuel with the Woodshaper, hopefully finding something useful. I think I'm going for it. It's not too many instants out of a Golgari deck that I expect. And most of them would just kill the Centaur anyway, and then, sure, we lose a Stray, but it's not the end of the world. They might want to fuel Undergrowth anyway and be fine with the trade, and then we have Luminous Bonds for whatever they play next. Eh, Pax Favor, not a card you... Often expect to see out of Golgari, but that's fine. I think it's time for Woodshaper plus Dissidents. And then hold on to the Luminous Bonds for a little longer, since the Luminous Bonds is not really enabling any attack. I think that's okay. A lot of Champions greats. This would also be a great time for the Dawn of Hope, for example. Guess I'll attack first. Reason not to triple block is that if they did have interaction, let's say status statue for centaur, then I would lose the two other creatures for free. So if I triple block, I would only lose two creatures unless they have something. So it's not unreasonable. Like, the Dissident is a nice mana sink, becoming up to a 4-4, but we also have Ladef Champion as a mana sink. So I think I'm fine making them use another trick here. If they don't want to lose a Dowser for just Dissident and a 2-2. That seems like a fine trade. Another one. Alright. And a Poisoner. So now it's time for the Luminous Bonds. Attack for two. And then... It's actually interesting what to play next. If I draw an eighth land, I could play Champion and make a token right away to get a bit of value. They have to top deck a removal spell for Champion, so I could get in more damage by playing Champion right now. Also, if I go generous straight, play my land, I guess I'm still insulated from a discard spell since I would have two cards in hand. I think I'll play champion. And then I'm fine playing out the land. So we're gonna sag the lockets. Beetle. So now I get to play the stray and make a token. See what we draw first. Just a land. I should make a token first. Get in one more point of damage. So they have to deal with the champion, otherwise that's just gonna get out of hand. Again, great time to top deck a Donophobe here. 
So now they have five power to put in front of the Ladef champion. But now with the Wood Shaper, I can have uh, four creatures to tap, so up to a 6-6. Six, six. So if they don't have anything, it would still attack pass. Beetle plus Okapi. But let's see what we find first. Scouts is fine. I could play the Scouts, but I kind of want to use the champion while we have him in play. In case they find removal. So yeah, I think the players just make a token attack for six with a champion. That's fine. Alright, so now I can double activate champion, which is pretty strong. So it can become up to an 8-8. So they can triple block it. They kind of have to, otherwise they're dead. Are we okay with a triple block? We would kill all three of their creatures and be left with two tokens or a four tokens astray and a wood shaper with the opponent at seven. It's not a bad trade. Yeah, I think I should cash it in before they find a removal spell. And I could play the scout since it can fly over next turn, but I think I want to extract as much value as possible from the champion. Alright, so I guess I'll put the Ceratoc first, I'll copy seconds. So we basically clear the opponent's board, so now the small stuff can start attacking and finish the job, essentially. We weren't forced to make that trade, since we had kind of the superior board presence. But let's say they did kill the champion, then they would have been left with a lot of creatures that block our stuff profitably. So I think forcing the trade there, especially considering we had a lot of good top decks remaining, made sense. So now... Fine, of course, can get back or champion, so that's great, and Cavalier. So I think I'm fine attacking with everyone. And even if the opponent has their own fine finality here, we would be left with two tokens that can finish the job, so I think I'm okay tapping out, or rather playing out all my stuff. So yeah, you don't need the finality half of fine finality for the card to be good. Just finding two creatures is plenty. Alright, we're off to a pretty nice start here. Pretty good opening hand here. I think I'm gonna hang on to the Harpooner. There's a lot of creatures the opponent can have that this can eat. Sprite, of course, being the best one. Alright, so I can find a land with a guide, or I can just play a stray for now, which is probably better. Probably want to find a black mana to turn on find finality. So how about I do that now? So we got some nice uh, value from both our creatures. Might be better off just taking it and then Recluse blocks a centipede. Yeah, I'll just take three. Alright, and get to double spell. I think I want to save the champion until I can maybe 
plate and make a token right away. Although that's pretty far in the future. But they haven't had an opportunity to use removal yet, so I don't want to just run out to the Ladef champion right now. Spybug. The Crawl Harpooner rejoices. So Harpooner the Spybug is pretty straightforward. Do I want to make an attack first, maybe with the Dissidents? Just attack and then threaten the pump if they block, but then I can't play the Harpooner. It's not like the Spybug is going to get out of range, but then the Harpooner would die. Seems unlikely for them to block Dissidents. Double blocking. Works for me. Then I'm just going to pump. Could also let this happen. But I think pumping, killing both is fine. So I'm not using the Harpooner right now to kill the spy bug, so they might end up uh, making it bigger. So I'll still get a chance to kill it later. And just trading Harpooner for spy bug is still fine. And the Harpooner would deal 4 damage to the spy bug at the moment, so. Even if they surveil once again, we'll be fine. Right, opponent aggressively surveilling here. And we've got our two mana Doom Blade at the ready. We're one land away from Champion activate in the same turn, so I think Wood Shaper makes sense. Nice, Dawn of Hope is perfect in this matchup. There's an argument for playing it out right now, so they can Thought Erasure us, but that's only one card. And I would rather get the Harpooner out there to kill Spybug, seems safer. So let's attack first. Alright, let's see if they can beat a Dawn of Hope. Yeah, let's just play it. And say go. Opponent's digging. That's a nice one too. Hmm, could do something tricky where we attack with everyone and then just cast the finality afterwards. I think we can probably wait on that. And then for now just play champion plus make a token. That sounds nice. And now to kill it I can also just find it back. And the Ladaf champion is kind of going to be our battering ram here to get through the board stall. Deadly visit, that's okay. Now that we have the Dawn of Hope, it's not as bad if we lose a champion since we have another mana sink that's even cheaper than the champion's ability. Dowser attacks. Seems like we can make a pretty good trade here. Question is do I make a token or do I draw a card by gaining life? How am I blocking? So I can put 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 4, and 1, 1 in front of it. 3, 4, 5. They get to kill, like, either the Recluse or the Stray and the Guide, and I get to draw a card. That seems better than just making another token. It's kind of close. So the finality half is looking pretty good here. Could wipe the board, be left with a big recluse. Don't really see how we lose from there. Um, could play a grindier game where we just find back the Ladaf champion. And maybe like a crawl harpooner or dissident. Stop them surveilling.
opponent's got one card in hand, so... They need to have some pretty good ones. Attack for three. Can just make two tokens here. All right, spy bug. Breakfast for the Necrolisk. I'll take four. And this is exactly a matchup where Donophope shines. I think I'll draw one card. Play Stalwarts and then still have an activation up. Yeah, I'll just take four. Could be more protective of my life total, since we can just chum block with the Donophobe token easily, but against the Demir deck, we're not really afraid of getting burnt out. So let's just get in there. Sure. I guess I'll decline as much as it pains me. Just make another token instead. Well, I was about to say <laughs> the mirror doesn't have any reach, but uh, that'll do it. Undergrowth is 11. All right, well, I got schooled here. Got too greedy, should have just chumped more. Yeah. Nothing we can do. Alright, GG's. That feels bad. Felt like we were basically in an unlosable position, but uh, yeah. Didn't think of the Lothless Giant, the one black burn spell in the in the set. Yeah, opponent played it well, played to their outs and they got there. So got to hand it to them. Let that be a lesson to you. This hand seems kind of clunky. No creatures to enable Convoke. Yeah, I don't actually like it all that much. We do have a Luminous Bonds as removal. This is a bit better. Can I keep the Dawn of Hope is the question. Could be very good, could be useless. Like how good is the Rosemane? Also needs white mana, or at least the Shield Mates. I think Dawn of Hope is probably a way for us to get back into the game. Maybe more so than the Rosemane. And if I keep the Dawn of Hope, it makes sense to keep kind of the cheap creatures to hold the fort. I think I'm bottoming. We're not gonna get uh, Thought Erasured here, so I guess I'll play the Beetle for now. If I play Dawn of Hope, I can make a token next turn, which might be better than playing Recluse. I think I'll go for it. Golgari does have a few answers to enchantments, but not that many. Ladef Champion. Still probably better off making a token. Get in for two, make another token, I think. Don't want to quite attack yet until I have six mana so I can make a token and draw a card.
opponent's not doing much. Maybe they're setting up a find finality here. I guess that could make sense. Got six mana. So drawing a card and then making a token would be fine. So I could attack with everyone. They block a 1-1, one, one, I draw a card. And end of turn make another token. Could be fine. Or I can just sit back, just get in with a beetle and make another token and not draw a card. I think I like drawing cards. New Might of the Masses could be exciting. Well, there's our own find finality, although no black man at the moment. I think I like champion plus tray. All right, and now I get to keep up Might of the Masses as well, which is nice. So if they do have like find finality, I still get to save a Ladaf champion. Yeah, it definitely feels like they're setting up Find Finality here, playing the creature that survives it after they put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Could be Necrotic Wounds that they're holding up. Under City Uprising. So if I were to Might of the Masses, they would trade. It's close. I think just getting rid of the Forgers for 1 mana is just a nice tempo play here. And we can just play Grind Your Game with Dawn of Hope. All right, so six mana once again, Beetle can attack. Or I could send in the tokens to draw a card. Right, let's get in there. Necrotic Wound for one. Still get to draw a card here. Now we could also Finality if we want to. Alright, 9 mana. Yeah, I mean, I'll just keep uh, playing the grind game here with uh, Dawn of Hope, don't see a reason to change. Fine trading of beetles, even though it fuels undergrowth. Might clear a path for the tokens in the future. So, two games now where we're seeing the power of Dawn of Hope. So yeah, the card is definitely very powerful in some situations. It's not always the case. Charnel Troll. Ten mana, so now I could draw a card and still make two tokens. Or I can just play the Skyline Scout to kill them as well. I guess I'm fine with Scout double token end of turn. At least we don't have to fear the Lothloth Giant killing us out of nowhere here. Yeah, that Giant was completely out of my radar, that game. Not exactly a card you associate with the Demir deck. Yeah, I guess I'll send everyone. And give Scout flying. Because the scout by itself is lethal, so they need to kill that. Yeah, opponent packs it in. Too much value from the Dawn of Hope. Alright, so 4 and 1. Losing one game that felt unlosable, but somehow managed to find a way. But yeah, there it is in our opening hand once again. And some fine creatures to back it up with, so... Definitely keep.
And there's a turn one mountain. So is it Boros? It is. Probably a lot of two drops to choose from here. Goes with the recruits. Can block it with the dissidents, so... I think my play is going to be Donophobe into Reckless on 3, into Activate Donophobe on 4, potentially. As opposed to play Dissidents. But I could still uh, change my mind based on what they play and what we draw. Bodyguard, that's a scary card. Alright, so now they can Mentor and the Recluse no longer blocks all that well. So had I played Dissident, I could have double blocked the Bodyguard potentially, although I probably don't want to do that in the face of any pump spells. So we're definitely on the back foot here. Next turn I might just have to double 2-drop to try and stem the bleeding. Definitely going to block with the Recluse. If they use a trick, they use a trick. But they're probably just going to develop their board some more. Ooh, Challenger, that's the scary one. And Vindicator. Yeah, we're in trouble. This Bounty of Might is going to be pretty key here. The goal is going to be to survive, have some creatures in play, and then use Bounty to beat their army, essentially. I'm not sure if that's going to work, because we're going to take a million damage next turn. Trying to block often just doesn't work out, so you just need those cheap removal spells like that way, it's like the cheap bound spells to try and keep up. If you do, then you can disrupt the mentor synergies, maybe keep a bodyguard without a second creature to attack with, and you can pick apart the the Boros strategy. But uh, situations like these are pretty difficult to beat. I don't know. I'll try this. I guess I could triple block. But I'm probably just dead to a pump spell on the Vindicator at this point. Sure Strike, 5, 10, 16. Yeah. If they have a Sure Strike, I would die anyway. So this is mostly playing around a plus 2, plus 2 effect. Alright, so... As it stands... I got rewarded for triple blocking. But I'm also at 5, so... You know. Well, that would have been very good if we could cast it. Maybe not that on board. I could also find back two creatures, but I don't think that's going to do it. Just make a lifelinking token to put in front of the challenger. Recluse can chum block the Vindicator. Probably still dead. Yeah, the Vindicator tramples too, so... I think we're dead if they send. So Reckless can soak up f four of the six damage. I still take two. Uh, f so I, I go exactly to zero life here. Oh well. Was probably going to lose to a Boros deck at some point, and they had a very good uh, draw there, so not much we could do. No white mana, but if we miss on white, and this hand loses a lot of its uh, strength, since kind of relies on curving out and getting to mentor with the stalwart, so yeah, I don't think I can keep this. Alright, this is much better. So one of the two drops can go, which one? Probably the Dissident, since Beetle plus Stalwart to make it bigger and to mentor on future creatures is kind of nice. So go turn 2 Stalwart, turn 3 Stray, and then the Beetle can power up the Stalwart to keep mentoring. Seems good. Why not land? It's uh, pretty greedy. And despite this looking like a beatdown draw, or deck doesn't mind drawing a few extra lands, since we've got some expensive cards to cast, Turn two sprites. Oh, uh. 
I kind of wonder how often people draft Guilds of Ravnica without knowing kind of how the set is structured and try and draft a two-color pair that's not supported. Well, they're pretty deep into green, so they might actually be Simic here. We get to attack. Even if they Whisper Agent, it's not that bad. I kind of want to keep the beetle for Stalwart's mentor potential, so I think I'll just play the guide for now. And get another planes. Another forest in the graveyard. And a swamp, so at least three colors. So Artful Takedown could be a thing, Capture Sphere, Bartism Bats, that's acceptable. So Beetle, Counter on Stalwarts, Mentor on to Stray, seems good. And then play Recluse. Well, it does have first strike. Alright, opponent scoops it up. Fair enough. Yeah, them chum blocking there made me afraid of a potential sweeper. Find finality, ritual of soot come to mind. Oh well. And there it is again in our opener. District guy to help us hit our land drops on the draw. I think we can keep. Turn one hawk. And there's a plane, so. Yeah, we'll need to find the recluse and the crawl harpooner here. Happy to block. It's all about playing defense against the Boros deck, minimize how much they can mentor, how much damage we take, and eventually try and take over the late game. That's fine. If they're casting a trick here, that means they can't cast one of their powerful 3-mana mentor creatures, so that's a fine exchange for us. Cavalier is also a nightmare for the Boros deck to deal with unless they have Luminous Bonds or Lava Coil. Or I guess Conclave Tribunal. Gilgate seems fine in case we pick up Find Finality. And when playing the Boros deck, it's also very important to kind of know when you should be committing more to the boards, when you should time your combat tricks, as opposed to when you should like hold back and set up for a better attack on the following turn. So some games you just curve out and beat face, but some games are pretty tricky to navigate as a Boros deck as well. So hopefully no clean answer for Cavalier here. Alright. Opponent's just gonna go on the beatdown plan. Guess it doesn't matter which one we block. Attack for four. I would like to get the Rosemain Center out there. Could just pay five mana. Next turn I can play Dawn of Hope and make a token. I could also just uh, play the Guild Gate and then tap one creature with Convoke. Could also play Dawn of Hope and play Rosemain. And then I can next turn make a token and draw a card. Like the way we're trying to beat this Hawk is, I guess, by out racing it with lifelinkers, which is definitely possible. Uh, or we could draw into one of our reach creatures to try and answer the hawk. I have one luminous bonds I could find with the wood shaper, but I guess the wood shaper can also find one of our answers. So maybe I do just wood shaper, try and find one of our reach creatures or luminous bonds, and then play the gates. Not 
Mm, that's not it. But I guess Wood Shaper number two can dig some more. I think I just Wood Shaper again. Alright, so next turn I can decide between Wood Shaper number two or run out Dawn of Hope to start making life linkers. Probably go to Wood Shaper again. And if we find Harpooner, we can play it. And otherwise, I can still either Convoke out to Centaur, play Dawn of Hope, or play Scouts. Rosemane Centaur it is. Could also go Scout into Rosemane and be completely tapped out. I think I would rather have an extra 2-2 on defense. In case I deal with the Rosemane, I can still trade off for the Blade Instructor at least. So I don't think I'm supposed to play anything else out. I want a 2-1 on defense, since it trades off for the Instructor. Just fine. And the 2-2 is a bit more valuable. Let's see if this holds. Could die at any point to a Cosmotronic Wave. So we went digging pretty deep here. Bodyguards. More Mentor. Ooh, hello. <laughs> well, I think it's uh, finality time. Now we should be in pretty good shape. Just want to get this Dawn of Hope going as soon as possible to get out of range of any burn spells. Once we start gaining a bit of life, I'll feel a lot better. Don't know if I need to draw a card, though. I mean, we're presenting lethal either way. Could go Recluse plus Rosemane, have a bit of insurance against the flying creature. I think Recluse is the safest in case of, like, a Hasty Legionnaire plus a bunch of pump spells, although with one card in hand, not sure what they could have. And is it better to make a token or a Rosemane? I guess Rosemane's fine. They could have Citywide Bust, I guess, killing Recluse and both Centaurs, and then I'm better off making a Dawn of Hope token. But I think in most circumstances I would rather just end the game by putting the Rosemane in play. Take hearts and concede. Well, lucky top deck there in the fine finality, but that's why we put it in our deck. Alright, 6 and 2, making it further than I expected. Even losing a game we probably shouldn't have lost. So yeah, time for another boss battle here. Let's go. Don't love having Bounty of Might in my opening hand, but don't think we can mulligan. Plenty of cheap creatures to draw in the meantime. Up against Demir. Nah, that blocks the Stalwart pretty well. I think I should attack. Good chance they don't block, but make him do it here. And then next turn I can potentially mentor onto the Recluse. So they're setting up for some powerful surveil synergies. So if I were to attack and mentor, I think that's better than getting the Rosemain out there. Although Rosemain's also good. Just uh, use this opportunity to mentor onto the Recluse. And we've got some nice late game cards in hand here with Fine Finality and Bounty. Yeah, I'll take another Rosemain.
think I take three from the operative since we kind of need our creatures for convoke. And the attack last turn was mostly just to upgrade the recluse and not as much about dealing damage. I guess I like just going hunted windows into Rosemane, no attacks. And then set up for this bounty of might. I should leave the witness untapped since I'm fine trading that with the operative. Could also keep mana up to represent a trick. Think I'm fine tapping out. Heartful takedown, sure. Still have two good blockers for the operative. Not a rose main to follow up with. Fine to maybe get him back. Ooh, spy bug. Into a poisoner. I mean, if we find a black mana, finality could also do some work. Did find land six. So how does our opponent block here? Snitch on Woodshaper, Poisoner on Recluse, and the bounty doesn't help there. So I could set up a more devastating bounty next turn potentially. And for now I could send in Witness and Stalwart to Mentor. And they don't have any amazing block. Yeah, we'll try this approach, since there's only the one center in the graveyard, so don't want to cast find yet. Ooh, nice. There's a Dawn of Hope. Well, now we can kind of switch gears and go with a value plan instead. If I attack with everyone, what happens? Poisoner goes in front of Rosemane. 1-3 uh, in front of the Woodshaper. I mean, it's not a bad bounty of my turn. But just going Dawn of Hope make a token is pretty good too. Make sure to resolve Dawn of Hope before they get Counterspell mana up. Alright. Yeah, Bounty pre-combat to get a Mentor trigger. I thought about it, but it seems... A lot worse than just using it at instant speed. But yeah, it's worth uh, thinking about at least. Alright, so now that they have a Sphinx in play, I'm under a bit more pressure to make something happen. So I might just send everyone here, see what happens. Alright, I think I would rather kill Snitch. Over Drake. So one, one, and one. They do get to grow the spy bug. Yeah, that's a decent follow-up. I can find double Rosemain Centaur and cast both of them in the same turn. So that's also worth pointing out. Especially now with Dowser not dying to the finality if we ever find black mana. So I can even play Dissident first. So we're just gonna try and go wide here. Would love to pick up a pump spell again. Might of the masses would be great. And Luminous Bonds is great too. So Bonds Douse or Smash seems good. Mm. 
get to grow the spy bug and potentially the tutu. Question is, am I making a token or am I drawing with a donophope? Making a token is probably better just to go wide. Points at four. Three blockers, so let's say they just replay Dowser. Block, 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 they're dead. Don't know if they can return the operative, maybe they can, and then just replay it, be at one life. So let's say they have four blockers. Yeah, I think we would be one short of actually killing them, but they're also forced to make some ugly blocks on the Rosemane Centaurs. Gets it back. Plays it. All right. That should seal the deal. All right, sweet. We managed to get there. Yeah, when people say green's the worst color, of course, there is a bit of merit to that, but if you open the right cards, then green can be totally serviceable. Oh yeah, Donophobe definitely did work. Didn't think we would have gotten as many wins as we did uh, without it. So I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.